everyone. Morning. Oh, Father God, as we come before you this morning, we give you thanks and we give you praise. Father, we thank you for the gift of life this morning. And thank you for closing us in our right mind. Almighty God, we are up this morning, not by our alarm, but by you, God. So we want to give you thanks. Father, this morning, God, we ask you to cover each and every one of us on this platform, even those who are not on. Lord, we ask in you this morning for the whole pouring of your Holy Spirit on this platform. Father, we ask you to lead us and to guide us and to keep us throughout this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 and pray in the spirit in all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests it continues says, with this in mind be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord for all the Lord's people this morning we want to come praying and approaching the throne of grace and this morning as we pray we are asking for four volunteer prayers 
but there are some specific prayers that we definitely want you to pay in mind as we pray this morning. The first is a, we want to pray especially for the control of this pandemic. We want to pray for spiritual stamina and mental strength through this another two-week lockdown. We also want to pray for the provision of food and medical assistance for those at risk. And we want to pray for the sick. So this morning we're asking for four volunteer prayers. The prayer line is now open. Most loving and gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, may your children come before you this day. Thank you, my Lord, for your goodness, your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your watch care. Precious Father, we come before you as empty vessels, seeking to be filled by your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your goodness and all that you've done for us so far. Our Lord, as we lift up this nation, as we lift up the, this pandemic that is before us, we ask that you do your wonderful thing. We ask that you would, Father, help us to, 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 to heed to directives that have been given to us so that we may be able to bring this pandemic under control. Father, your word has said, uh, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman make it, but in vain. We ask your Lord that, 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 uh, that you would keep this nation there, Lord. Keep us safe from this pandemic. We ask that you bring it under control. And we, we ask that once it comes under control, that we'll be able to, to, to point to you and say you, you alone were able to bring this under control. And Father, help us to do what we need to do so that you can do what you need to do. Bless us, we pray, dear Lord, and meet our requests. We pray in the sweet and precious name of Jesus. But Lord, forgive us of our sins, so that our prayers not be hindered. We pray in Jesus' name and for our sake. Amen. Amen. Most kind and eternal Father, we're truly grateful for the opportunity that we can come once more before your mercy throne of grace. And as we come near, Heavenly Father, God, you know our hearts, you know our minds. We pray for forgiveness where we have sinned and come short of your glory. Please wash us and cleanse us from all your righteousness, creating us clean hearts and renew right spirit within us. Heavenly Father, as I come to your Lord this morning, as we are about to go again in another two weeks lockdown, Heavenly Father, I pray for those who do not have the means to go through for these two weeks, dear Father. I pray that you open up the way for them, provide food for them, dear Father Jesus, provide the necessary funds, so that they'll be able to purchase what they need to go through. Lord, you say you're a provider and your words cannot lie there, Father. You said you're not slack concerning your promises as men call slackness. And so therefore, we look to you because our strength and our help cometh from thee. You, Lord, know how to make a way out of no way when there seems to be no way, dear Heavenly Father. You are the one who makes things possible when it looks impossible, dear Heavenly Father. So as we come, I place your people before you this morning. Provide for them, just like how you provided for the children of Israel, dear Heavenly Father. You provide for them now, and you can provide for us now, and provide even more. Thank you for hearing, and thank you for answering. Open up the floodgates of heaven, I pray, and pour us out a blessing. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, the great God of the universe, we come before you in the name of Jesus this morning to thank you that our precious Lord and Savior still lives and reigns. Jesus, who come to see who 
did so much that they had to ask what manner of man this is. And he said, if we ask anything in his name, he will hear and answer. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of prayer, that we can call upon you, that we can ask you to cleanse us, to forgive us, to empower us and cover us with your precious robe of righteousness, Lord Jesus. This morning, we come clinging to the cross of Calvary, pleading the blood of Jesus. For you said, if your people would pray, you will heal. You will hear from heaven and heal our land. Lord, this is something that only you can do. And so we commit to you this pandemic, praying that you would bring down the strongholds of the evil ones who have caused this in the first place. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is the spiritual warfare. But you are greater than any pandemic, any natural disasters, anything in this world. And so we ask that your precious angels would bind all of the evil of sickness and the pandemic that is causing havoc in this world. Lord, you are able to stop it if it is your will. And so we commit to you all of our loved ones who are sick and suffering. You've heard the names. You know those who need you to intervene. And we place them before you, those with the COVID virus, those battling cancer and other sicknesses, recovering from surgery, whatever the situation, we place it before you, Lord, with thanksgiving because Jesus is still the great physician. And we ask in accordance with your will that you would intervene and heal. We lay before you those who are on the front lines. We thank you for protecting and providing, and we ask for continued coverage in accordance with your will. We thank you, Lord, for all of your provisions, and we trust you that as we go through this lockdown, that you will supply our needs in a signal, a manner as you did for Elijah and the children of Israel. You're still the same yesterday, today, and forever, and nothing is too hard for you, Lord. You can do all things. You can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or even think. So we give you thanks. We give you praise in advance for keeping us in sound minds, for providing and protecting and guiding in accordance with your will. We just praise you, Lord, and thank you for the privilege of prayer. Through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father and our God, indeed we are thankful for your grace and your mercy. Just a few months ago, the men of this world were boasting about their military power and what they are able to do in the blink of an eye. Today, the entire world is at the mercy of an invisible foe called a coronavirus. God, the economies of the world are folding. People are without jobs. Their very livelihood is threatened. Savings have evaporated. Business that were once booming are folding and your people in some ways are despaired. But you, oh God, you are the God of nature. And this did not caught you by surprise. And you have a plan for your people. You promise us that our bread and our water shall be sure. And we pray now, God, that we know you have the ability to stifle this virus and eradicate it from the face of the earth. Oh God, I ask that you intervene and save your people. Increase our faith in you. There are those, Father, who must go out daily 
to receive their bread. They are severely challenged at this time. Father, you provide food for Elijah. You allow the meal not to go out, nor the oil for that Shunammite woman. We now put our people in your hands and we ask, O oh God, for your provision. I ask, O oh God, that as your people, that you will give us spiritual stamina to go through this period, this other 14 days of lockdown as a country. Keep our eyes focused on you. Keep our eyes focused on the mission. We recognize, God, that your coming is near, even at the door and student of the scripture. We learn that these things must be before the you come. So help us now, God, to look up and to be um, students of the word and be willing to share a word of hope with a people who are depressed and disillusioned and frustrated at this time. Help us to be true ambassadors for you. Remember those who are sick, oh God, who are going through cancer and uh, the scourge on their body and the family members. Remember Jessica Knowles and Cherise Roll and family who must deal with that challenge. Now, God, we ask you for healing and we still believe that there's nothing outside of your limits. So we ask you, God, to visit this family this morning and close them in the palm of your hand. We are happy for Sister Moss and her testimony. And we ask you, God, to continue the work of restoration. I lift up that list that Elder Ramon read before you this morning. God, we have heard positive testimonies of your grace to your people. This morning again, God, there's somebody waiting for the troubling of the waters. Oh, Father, please be with your people. Minister to their needs. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. Spirit, he said, it was an exciting day on a vast sheep farm to see the endless flocks of sheep grazing peacefully, sheep being dipped and dosed and after dark to see by the headlight of cars, Lucas being poison sprayed was a memorable experience for a city dweller. So there was some unpleasant moment along the way, such as the father and eldest son lost their temper with each other and nearly came to blows, said, and swearing. And these people, they who were Christian, church and goes to church every week, every Sabbath. So the eldest son and the friend retired that night. At one he said, I was in bed, saw him switch off the light, heard him, hopped into the bed. Then he was out of bed, kneeling, mumbling a prayer. That morning he said, why did you did that? He said, I must, he replied. That's how I was taught. That's how my mother brought me up. It's just part of me. And that is the reason, number one, why so many pray. In Christianity and in other religious, they do it because this is how they were thought. They have been conditioned to say these prayers. Parents have molded their children. Praying is the habit, part of the children's culture. Yet the child may never really get to know God. The Hebrew and the Old Testament times pay close attention to the training of their children. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts and press them on your children, talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up, 
they grow up praying and in turn train their children. Yet God told Israel, when you spread your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Even if you offer many prayers, I will not listen. He said, how horrified Israel must have been when the prophet Isaiah told them how God disdained their prayer. Prayer are not acceptable to the creator if they are no more than a pious habit, a bit of culture or tradition, a convention. There's a second reason why people pray. So this Michelle from Australia set out in a tiny boat, rowing to an island of the Philippines. She wanted to go around a spit of the island to have a picnic, then row back to, to the cabin she and her mother shared. So the tide was deceptive and her blaring radio mind nubbing and it took an hour or more before it dawned on her that she had been swept into a fast ocean current. So she was alarmed, switched off the radio then and set to work to stroke back to the island. The sea was turning choppy, straining with the effort, wheezing and groaning. She tried to make every stroke count, turning to gauge her distance from the time, from time to time, with a sense of disbelief, she saw more than five hours pass. The island was further away than ever. She exclaimed to herself, this boat is a dead trap. She stood up to dive into the sea to try swimming to the island. Then she saw the danger, sharks, darkness soon to fall, a storm about to break. She collapsed, whimpering, the island was too far, receding too fast. In the grip of such a powerful current, she had no chance. Soon the storm and the night were up on her, waves towering over her, then flung her and the boat violently into the air. Once she found herself sucked down, down, battled to hold her breath, to claw her way up. Her boat was gone. No, it had been capsized. She found an outrigger and clenched to it all through the night as the wave whirled and crashed about her and flung her about. Then she began to pray earnestly, desperately. The cry tore from her, help. Help God, if you are out there, help. She could not hear her voice above the fury about her. She drifted for three days and two nights without sleep or water, holding on to a boat. And then she saw sharks and prayed and they did not turn towards her. She saw a fishing vessel and prayed but there was no one on deck to spot her waving arms. She kept praying and then two men appeared on deck and one saw her. The boat slowed down and came to rest about 50 yards away. They gestured for her to swim to them. In a daze of exhaustion and prayer, she did so. The fishing vessel at last took her on board, where she sunk deep on the deck and threw a tortured throat sob to the captain. Thank you for saving my life. I did not save you, he replied. Surely you must realize it was God who saved you. This 21 year old had been empty of God, empty of religion storm tossed, drifting southward alone on a vast Pacific, 
she learned something about prayer to God. Why did she pray? Because she wanted something to, for protection, protection from the wave, and from the shark, energy to keep going, rescued. The second reason why people pray is therefore they want something. It could be prayer for money or something money could buy or for help, friendship, achievement in education or sports, a marriage, a holiday. They know the Bible says, ask and it will be given to you. So they have set their hearts on something and hope prayer will deliver it. People whose prayer, prayer life is motivated by selfish desire do not know what prayer is, nor do they know the creator of the universe, the sustainer of every particle of matter and every vestige of life. Without knowing God, they cannot truly pray. Now, the third reason, some pray because they are afraid. Life is full of danger, crime, illness, AIDS, virus, like this virus that we're facing today. Population or pollution, explosion, crop failure, air pollution, holes in the ozone layer. People feel they might end up like Job saying, what I fear has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened. They need an amulet, a lucky charm, a lucky prayer to ward off the danger. Not praying would make life even more perilous. So people pray because they have been taught that this is the thing to do, or because they want something, or because they fear it is the right to teach others to pray, to approach God with our needs and fear, but our motivation for having life should be higher, nobler. So the reason for prayer and a prayer life should be, I want to get closer to my God. I need God with every fiber of my being. I want total intimacy and all prevailing relationship with him so that I want to become more like my heavenly father. I want the Holy Spirit to rule my life. As Paul says, I want to die to myself and have my life hidden with Christ in God. And thank you for staying on with us. Now, Pastor, can you give us the benediction? Not a problem. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for the prayers this morning. We thank you for the prayer requests that have been lifted up. Father, as we go into another two-week lockdown, Father, we are reminded of your word in Psalms 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence my help cometh. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.